Welcome to the Cardinal Rule. Today I'm going to look at players that I think might be good options for the Cardinals in the second round of the NFL Draft. Only the Cardinals brass know exactly how they've stacked their draft board. But, based on their needs, many think they're going to go after a cornerback and some type of offensive playmaker in the first two rounds of the upcoming draft. It's possible they go in another direction, but most of the players I'm going to look at today are either cornerbacks or offensive playmakers, with the exception of a few linebackers I've also added to the list. Because it's so difficult to project exactly where players are going to be picked and who's going to slide and which players teams are going to reach for, I'm including a number of players who might be late first round picks, might be early second round picks, even a few that might end up going third round or later. But everyone on my list is someone who, based on mock drafts or things I've read, it seems like could go somewhere in the second round. Now obviously this might mean the Cardinals have to trade up to get one of these players, or that they would get them as part of trading back in the first round. Obviously we'll have to wait till draft day to see how that plays out. So, without further ado, let's look at some of the players I think might be options for the Cardinals in the second round. Now the first group we're going to talk about are who I think are the top three running backs in this class. Travis Etienne from Clemson, Najee Harris from Alabama, and Javante Williams from the University of North Carolina. All three of these players could be gone in the first round, but teams have been less likely to take running backs early in the draft in recent years due to their shorter careers and propensity for injury and the fact that you can often get good running backs later in the draft, many teams prefer to take other positions in the first round. So while it's possible that all three of these running backs could be drafted in the first round, it's equally possible that one or more of them slip into the second round. Now the odds are the Cardinals would probably have to trade up to get one of these three running backs because many teams do look at the top half of the second round as a good place to draft running backs. The next two players we're going to look at are cornerbacks that I think are first round talents who might slip into the second round. Now, like with the running backs, the Cardinals would probably have to move up to the early part of the second round to get one of these two players. The first is Caleb Farley. Now, I had him listed as someone who I think the Cardinals might look at in the first round, and odds are he will be gone long before the second round. But I've included him on this list because it is possible that teams might be scared off by that injury issue, and he could slide into the second round. Now, I don't think it's going to happen, but you never know with injury concerns. The other player in this group is Asante Samuel Jr., cornerback out of Florida State. Now, in one of my previous videos, I did mention that I didn't think Asante Samuel Jr. would be a target for the Cardinals because I think he projects more as a slot corner based on his size. But I'm including him on this list because I have seen a number of reports that indicate he's a player the Cardinals are looking at and a player that they like. So maybe they do see him as a player who can play as an outside cornerback. Now, the next group we're going to look at are some of the receivers who might be available in the second round. The first is Elijah Moore, wide receiver out of Ole Miss. He's a smaller receiver at 5'9", 185 pounds, and pro football focus compares him to a faster Cole Beasley. He projects as more of a slot receiver, but he does have really good speed, and he could end up being what they were hoping Andy Isabella was going to be at the next level. Next is Rondale Moore, wide receiver out of Purdue. Moore is also a smaller wide receiver at 5'9", 180 pounds, and also projects as a slot receiver. With his propensity for breaking tackles, Rondale Moore might be one of the most dynamic receivers after the catch in this entire class. Next is Diami Brown, wide receiver out of North Carolina. At 6 foot 1, 185 pounds, Diami Brown is a little bit bigger receiver. He does a good job getting a clean release off the line of scrimmage, and Pro Football Focus compares him to Sterling Shepard. Next is Terrace Marshall Jr. out of LSU. Marshall is a big receiver at 6 foot 3, 200 pounds. He has an outstanding catch radius and really good speed for his size. Then we have Kadarius Toney, wide receiver out of Florida. He measures in at 6 foot and 193 pounds. Like Rondale Moore, he is truly electric after the catch. Next up, we have the tight ends. If you watched my recent mock draft video, Pat Fryermuth is a familiar name, as he showed up on both of my mock drafts. He's 6'5", 258 pounds, and has played with a physical style that earned him the nickname Baby Gronk. 
Next up is tight end Hunter Long out of Boston College. Long is a good all-around tight end, but he doesn't have the athletic upside of a player like George Kittle. He's probably more comparable to a player like Kyle Rudolph, who was a productive player for the Minnesota Vikings for many years and recently signed with the New York Giants. Next up are three off-ball linebackers that I think might be possibilities for the Cardinals. Now of the positions I'm looking at today, I think this is the one that it's least likely the Cardinals draft in the second round. But for some reason, I just don't think linebacker is completely off the table for the Cardinals. First up is Nick Bolton, linebacker out of Missouri. At 6 foot 232 pounds, Bolton's a little shorter than the ideal inside linebacker, and he doesn't have elite speed, but he does everything else well, and his physical style might complement Isaiah Simmons very nicely. Next is Jabril Cox, linebacker out of LSU. At 6 foot 4, 231 pounds, he's taller than Nick Bolton and projects as more of a coverage linebacker. Next up is Zaven Collins out of Tulsa. Collins is 6 foot 4, 260 pounds. But despite his size, he has freaky athletic ability and moves like a smaller linebacker. And despite not being a full-time edge rusher, he does have good pass rush skills. And any team that drafts him may be looking to take advantage of that versatility as both an off-ball linebacker and a pass rusher. The last group I'm going to look at are part of that next tier of cornerbacks that starts after Asante Samuel Jr. First up is Tyson Campbell out of Georgia. He has the tools to be a solid cornerback in the NFL, but hasn't produced consistently as of yet. Next up is Ifatu Melifanwu out of Syracuse. At 6'3", 213 pounds, Melifanwu has rare physical ability, but he is going to need some development and coaching to take advantage of those physical tools. Finally, we have Kelvin Joseph out of Kentucky. Joseph has all the tools to become an outstanding cornerback in the NFL but he needs more playing experience and to work on things like anticipation and reading routes and things like that. So these are some of the players I think might be good fits for the Cardinals in the second round. Now again, there might be players they would consider taking the second round that I didn't discuss, but I think these are some of the more likely candidates, especially when you consider positions of need. Let me know who you think the Cardinals should take in the comments below. And while you're at it, please be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button, and also hit the notification bell if you want to know when I post my next videos. Thanks for joining us on the Cardinal Rule. We'll see you next time.